Well, this is new for me. You guys have probably figured out by now that uh, I'm not JD. Well, unfortunately, JD has moved on from Eastwood. He got a really good opportunity, and we're freaking excited for him. Um, but that does not mean that this bike is going to stop. We're going to bring in Cody. We're bringing in Mark. You'll probably see Scott in here a little bit. All the guys that you've seen in hundreds of other Eastwood videos, they're coming in, they're going to help us out, and we're going to get this bike done. So number one, what we're talking about today, we were talking about blasting and body filler. We had a whole bunch of parts on this cafe racer. We wanted to take them down to bare steel, bare, bare aluminum, and get them ready for paint, primer, whatever we're going to do to them. So the way we started was with blasting. Blasting is an incredibly easy process. It's time consuming and it can be messy and it can be hot and it can be cold, but it's really easy to do. All you need is a compressor. We were using the QST for this because we can pull it out back. You need the blaster itself. Today we're using the 100 pound media blaster and you need some media. Um, I always like going with the glass beads. If you want something more abrasive, you can go ground glass. We have a ton of options. You can check them out on the website, but you basically find the media that's right for your project. When you're blasting, you definitely want to be in an area that's very far away from your neighbor's house, from other cars, from other people, because like I said, it's a messy process, but it's, it's by far the best way to remove stuff. You can see how quickly it's ripping through this frame, the swing arm, and the tank itself was actually even crazier how quickly it came off. So I will give you a few tips when you're blasting. Number one, I should have taken my own advice, but I didn't, throw down a tarp, so you can catch all that media and reuse it once or twice to save yourself some money. Number two, do all of this in one shot, like I said before. Don't say, oh, I'll come back later and do it again. You won't, or you won't want to, or it's gonna stink when you do it. So just get it done all in one shot. So the last thing I'll say about blasting that I think everybody should know is that it's absolutely fantastic for getting into tight areas that you would not be able to get into with a traditional mechanical method like an angle grinder. Um, the only other way you're going to be able to get into these tight areas, like on the wheels that we had to do, is by chemically stripping. Chemically stripping is fantastic because it's kind of a, you drop it in and you walk away, but you can't do that yourself. You're not going to buy 10 gallons of chemical stripper for just two motorcycle wheels. So blasting is a great option, and like I said, you know, you're going to use it on projects down the road. So we're all done blasting, got everything cleaned up. Most of that stuff's going to stay in storage inside for a while until we get to it. But we wanted to get to the brunt of today's project, which was getting this tank and cow into primer and then filler. So let's talk about prep work for this. When you're done blasting, you're going to be left with dirt and all the glass media laying all over your parts. You want to make sure you get that as cleaned up as possible. We just use some pre-painting prep. You can use acetone, whatever you need to do to get that bare metal as clean as possible for your next step. So at this point, our tank is clean, it's looking good. Cleaned up our cow off camera too. We need to get into primer. We like to lay down a layer of epoxy primer before filler. It's gonna protect that bare metal, and once you scuff it up, the filler will adhere to it, no problem. So today for this project, we're actually using the 2K Durspray cans. Um, they come in a bunch of different formulas. We are using the epoxy primer. This is gonna cover up our bare metal really nice, and once we scuff it up, the filler will adhere to it, no problem. Um, one of the reasons I love these cans is because it's a two component paint, so it's going to give you that durability, that finish like a paint gun would. But more importantly, it's activated by humidity in the air. So you actually shake it up, give it a spray, it activates in the air, hardens on your part, and then you can put the can back on the shelf and pick it up in a month from now, and you'll still be able to use the rest of that paint in the can. When you're doing this, we always recommend a crosshatch pattern. So you'll see JD goes through, does the whole tank in one direction, comes back for that second coat in the opposite direction, so vertical in this case. And if you do it like that, you're going to have really nice even coverage. Whew. So after a weekend to dry, this Duraspray Epoxy Filler Primer, dark gray, looks amazing. So smooth, did a great job at covering this thing. Now. Some next steps we need to do here. First things first, we got to get this sanded, but I want to lay down some guide coat to really highlight those low spots on the tank to make sure we get some filler in there. Then we're going to sand most of this with 220, come back with a little bit rougher in those low areas just to make sure that filler is going to stick in there nice and good. Then we're going to lay down another layer of epoxy primer, and then once we get that sanded, this thing will be ready for paint. 
Let's go ahead and get to it. Take a look at that dime right there. That was right like that, and it's still a little bit low, but man, this filler primer took care of most of it. Still gonna throw some filler in there, but really, really close to being flat. Even with just a little tiny bit of sanding on this side, you could really start to see where those lows are. Got some here, some here, one up here, maybe a little bit right there. Let's keep sanding, really iron them out so we can get some filler in there. All right, it's been about two and a half hours of sanding and this whole thing is finally roughed in. What we're gonna do, wipe it down with some pre and move on to the filler. Finally. We've mentioned this before when you're cleaning, but it's always good to just remind you. When you're wiping something down, we always recommend wipe it in one direction, flip your rag to a clean side, and then you can wipe again. This way you're not dragging dirt or old grime back through the spot you just cleaned. Just repeat that process and wipe until the rag is clean. So now we can move on to the fun stuff. Well, some of you might find it fun. I find it fun. I like body work. I don't do a lot of it. Maybe that's why I like it. Today we're working with Contour Premium Body Filler. Uh, I really like this stuff. It's easy to work with. I feel like it's very forgiving for beginners like me. So mix this stuff up. You put in your hardener and then you actually fold your body filler and your hardener together. This is going to help eliminate any air bubbles in your stuff. Just again, you kind of got to work quick with this stuff. You don't want it to harden on you while you're still applying it that's gonna give you poor results. So mix it up as fast as you can, make sure there's no air bubbles, and get it on your tank. You'll know when it's mixed, it goes from that yellow and that blue, and obviously that makes it green, and once it's a solid, even green color throughout, you know it's ready to go. So JD's worked with body filler before. Um, it's not something he does a lot of, so his technique, he was kind of learning as he was going. He did a really good job. Like I said, you get it on, Use your filler spreader, you can kind of feather out the edges, that way you don't have giant clumps on either end that you have to sand down. But it's really as simple as that. You mix, you apply it, you let it dry, and then we can come back and sand. We were lucky, we only had about three spots on this tank that we had to fill. On the left side, there was that spot where your knee went. On the right side, it was kind of on that body line. And then there was one spot, a little more forward, that was a very, very tiny dent. We just covered that up with a little bit of filler. So your body filler is going to dry up depending on your environment in 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, usually then you can go back, start with the lower grit. I think in this case JD started with about a 40 or 80 grit, started, knocked down the big chunks and then you can start moving up in your grits as you go. One thing to keep in mind as you're moving through your grits of sandpaper is it's always good to have a can of guide coat nearby. You can do a little dusting, then you'll start sanding, and you can kind of see your sanding scratches that you left behind or your low spots. This is looking really good. Pretty much just some sanding scratches here, but you can really see that little tiny low where I wanted to fill. That is smooth. Let's flip over to the other side. Not so smooth. Like I said, body work's all about patience. That other side, Needed a lot more work than the first side, and JD took his time. It took a couple coats of filler to get this 100% right, but by the time he was done sanding, this thing looked awesome. It was like there was no dent even there. All 
All right, so I know we didn't show you the cowl, but that's just saving you guys from having to watch the same process twice. You put in primer, you add your filler, you sand, and then you're done. So there you have it, filler's done. Like anything, the more you do it, the better it's gonna look, the more proficient you're gonna get at it. Um, I'm happy with how these two pieces came out. I think JD did an absolute fantastic job for not having a ton of experience with it. But now we gotta get them into primer. We're using the same 2K Dara spray. Like I said, we had those leftovers from that cans, got it covered in another two or three coats, and now it's protected until we're ready to paint them. So there it is, everything's in primer. We're ready for paint. Now I hope you guys like this episode. I know I'm not JD. I know I can't bring the same energy that he had, but I hope you'll stay following along with the series. I'm very excited about where it's gonna go and what this bike's gonna look like when it's all done. If you have any comments, drop them down below. Give me some tips for moving forward, things you wanna see, things you didn't like, things you did like, let me know. And if you wanna find any of the tools and equipment we used, you can follow this link to eastwood.com.